All right, so yesterday I put out a video discussing the first half of Arthur Hayes' most recent uh, Medium post, which he calls Max Bidding. And in the first half, he gives a big, it's macro overview. So it's all about the macro economy and how it would relate to cryptocurrency and his projections there. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check that one out first. It's a good precursor to this video. In this video, I'm going to cover the second half of that article, which dives into the Ethereum merge. Um, and goes over what his predictions are for Ethereum. Now, it's no secret, he labels the Medium post max bidding, so it's, again, his sentiment is no secret here, but he makes some really good points on the merge, some things that we need to watch out for, and if you're concerned about the merge, some things that might help ease your mind. So, uh, the first thing is, for those of you who don't know, the Ethereum merge, Ethereum is shifting from proof of work to proof of stake. And what that means is, is proof of work is when you see all the mining rigs, all the graphics cards, the ASIC miners, you know, the racks and racks of machines running. Um, and what they're doing is processing transactions on the Ethereum network, which they get rewarded for in Ethereum. That is going away and it's shifting to proof of stake, which is just a node that you can run on your everyday computer. So this is going to open it up and make it a lot more accessible for people to start uh, contributing to the Ethereum network without having to invest in all these machines. It's a lot less energy um, intensive, um, so it'll be more efficient going to proof of stake. It's also going to be more decentralized because as you, you know, if more people can contribute to the network, then that leads to more people contributing, more nodes, things like that. Um, and, and as, you know, for a hacker, that's a lot harder to hack. The 51% just got a lot bigger. So um, this switch, though, has caused a lot of controversy in the space because all the miners, once this switch takes place, all the miners and their equipment, thousands and mil actually millions of dollars worth of equipment is going to be pretty much kaput. I mean, it's not going to be worth anything to mine Ethereum anymore. Um, because these machines, again, Ethereum won't be rewarding them anymore. It'll be going to proof of stake. And so all these machines will be sort of worthless unless they switch it to another network, um, which is what they are talking about um, doing. It, it's the, you know, we've seen a lot about the Ethereum proof of work chain that's going to be forked out. And um, there's, you know, a lot of controversy around that as well. So, you know, that's kind of up in the air. But just know that the miners are not necessarily happy with this uh, this switch. But a lot of people deem it very necessary. Something else that is notable about the merge is that when the merge happens, the Ethereum that's locked up in the beacon chain right now will then be unlocked. So if you guys remember, lots and lots of Ethereum has been deposited into the new chain, but nobody has been able to withdraw that Ethereum once it's been deposited um, until that chain goes live, then they'll be able to access the Ethereum on there. Now, I know there's STETH and some things like that. I'm not discussing all of the different liquidity protocols and things like that, but just know that you know all of that locked Ethereum will be accessible once, the B, or once that chain goes live. And a lot of people are worried about this because you're increasing the supply massively, the, the accessible supply of Ethereum, and so a lot of people are worried that these people are going to get their money back and they're going to dump it um, and it's going to shoot the price down. And Arthur kind of dives into why he doesn't expect that necessarily to happen. And there's a lot of dynamics that play into this. So I'm going to start with this portion where he says, The Amber Group published an excellent piece discussing all things merge. Here are the relevant takeaways. The market expects the merge to happen on or around September 19th, 2022. So September of this year. The ETH issuance per block will reduce by 90% post-merge, which renders ETH a deflationary currency. So this is a very big point. So with the merge, like I said, right now, miners have to be rewarded in Ethereum. So, you know, they, they process these transactions, they get Ethereum. Well, a lot of these miners have other expenses to pay for. So when they get the Ethereum that's been issued, they then market sell it to cover those expenses, which puts a lot of selling pressure on Ethereum. Now, not all of them do, and some of them hold the currencies and things like that, but they do have the ability to do that. With, with the issuance, the ETH issuance going down by 90%, um, there's actually going to be a burn mechanism that will cause Ethereum to turn into a deflationary asset in times of high transaction throughput. Um, and, and there's a calculation for that. I'm not sure on what that is, but there's like a, an inflection point of where Ethereum becomes deflationary depending on the daily transactions. Uh, e point three, ETH staked on the beacon chain will remain locked for another six to 12 months. So 
Um, the channel will go live. The ETH will be locked for up to six to twelve months. So this is something um, that a lot of people have been concerned about: is that you know the Ethereum that has been locked, people being able to access that, increasing supply, which will lead to a dump. Um, we do have a timer on that, so there's going to be a time after the chain is launched where that Ethereum will not be accessible yet. Um, so it'll give the chain kind of time to do its thing before they get access to that money, um, and uh, you know, kind of puts i guess the chain in a better place because it'll have time to act, you know get proof of stake and all that stuff started um and not have to worry about all these people dumping their tokens but again there's some things that'll offset that and i think that's why they put the timer on here is because by that time i'm, I'm sure they're hoping that the chain will be fully functional um and that a lot of the deflationary effects will have been you know put in place and so we'll start to see some of the results of that which would offset any of the selling that we would get from the locked ether the next piece uh, of the article that I think is a worthy takeaway is Arthur runs through his hypothesis, and it's a five-piece hypothesis on what he projects from the Ethereum merge. One, I'm confident the merge will happen by the end of this year due to increased noise made by Ethereum miners who will likely lose a significant chunk, if not all, of their income in the proof-of-stake world. So just like we talked about, um, you know, the miners' equipment is going to be sort of irrelevant. They can move it technically over to Bitcoin or something like that, but they're not going to be making near as much income as they were um, on Ethereum. And they are starting the Ethereum proof-of-work um, proof of work chain, which is going to be a fork of Ethereum that will continue to use proof-of-work. However, I really do not see that it's by certainly not going to make them as much money as they were on the main chain of ethereum and they might make us you know squeeze a few bucks out of it for now but i don't see that really lasting for very long two the recent market route broke the souls of the super cycle bulls who were big on ethereum and DeFi the cycle turning them into a horde of indiscriminate sellers um, so, I'll, you know, the downturns that we've seen have been absolutely brutal. The bankruptcies, the all of this stuff has been really brutal, which has turned a lot of people into forced sellers who weren't really convicted on the Ethereum merge. The buy the rumors, sell the news phenomenon post-merge will not occur. Anyone who might sell has likely already sold due to the intense downturn price movement over the past month. So kind of going off that same last point here is that a lot of the people who were thinking about selling have already sold. Um, and the ones who are holding are probably more convicted. Now, there always is more sellers, so don't be fooled by that. Um, but at the same time, I do think it's highly likely that most of the people who are going to get shook out have already been shook out. I mean, the whole crypto economy basically just collapsed um, over the last couple months. So, um, And we're starting to finally come out of that. And if the merge occurs, that's good news. And I think it will be looked at as a, as a a major positive for holders and so holders will continue to hold i believe that as well the merge means that ethereum becomes a deflationary currency and the usage forecast to continue growing as a DeFi gains popularity increasing the rate of deflation so the more transactions that occur on the new chain the more eth that'll get burned via the burn mechanism on that chain which is how it becomes deflationary right so there will be eth issued um, to stakers and things like that, they still get those rewards. But the more transactions that are on there, there's a burn mechanism. Part of that gas fee goes to the burn, um, and so if we get you know a lot of activity, that's going to increase the burn rate, which in turn decreases the supply of Ethereum. Point five. Although there are other layer one smart contract network competitors, many of them already feature some version of a proof of stake consensus algorithm. Ether is the only major cryptocurrency currently transitioning from proof of work to proof of stake. So there are a lot of other chains out there that use proof of stake. And what Arthur, I think, is basically saying is that this is going to bring a major emphasis on the proof of stake side. It's our, it, It's been around. There's been a lot of chains that have done it, projects that have done it. Um, but no major project as big as Ethereum in the crypto space has done this. And so I think if Ethereum does this, and they do it successfully, um, a lot of those other chains might get some more attention and proof of stake will be looked at as a more legitimate um, form of consensus, I believe. So this whole thing is, I would say the whole merge piece is really bullish for Ethereum um, and the crypto space as a whole. I think the, the bearish case is that it doesn't go through on time. Um, but overall, I do think the merge is a great thing. Um, and a lot of the miners and, you know, some people who own a lot of mining rigs are going to be upset with this just because all of their investments um, in those rigs is, is going way down. So, um, of course, they're going to be upset about this. But for the future of crypto, for the future of Ethereum, I think that this is all a very 
good thing for the space, the proof of stake, the energy consumption piece going way down, which we know has been a big topic in mainstream media, is talking about the energy consumption of Bitcoin mining and Ethereum mining. And so this will help that argument as well as making the, uh, you know, contributing to the network a lot more feasible for most people. Now, you still need 32 ETH staked um, in order to become a node, but there's ways that you can, if you don't have 32 ETH, that you can still contribute via pools and things like that. Um, but that 32 ETH staked piece is another piece that is going to really reduce the supply of Ethereum. That's what Arthur Hayes is projecting is that, yes, while you're going to have a lot of Ethereum unlocked over the six to 12 months after um, due to the people getting access to the, the deposited ETH on the beacon chain, uh, you're going to have also a lot of people that are buying up 32 Ethereum so that they can start running these nodes. Um, and so, you know, you're probably going to see a lot of buying on the Ethereum side to get enough to do such things. So, again, super bullish for the space. Guys, if this is your first time to the channel, please like and subscribe. We cover all things crypto on this channel, and I'd love to have you guys along for the journey. With that being said, I will see you guys next time.